Survivor mode. Where's the tropical beach and 16 contestants? No, this is not that kind of survivor. Are you feeling unrested even after you've had a relaxing weekend? Have you noticed responsibilities piling up even though you feel like you've been working nonstop? That's the survival mode we're talking about. Survival mode is our brain's response when it perceives there is danger around us. Survival mode can also tell us when we're ignoring our brain's cry for help for too long. So hold on tight and we'll give you some signs to look out for. And even better, how to start pulling yourself out of the pit. Number one, you're skipping out on pieces of your daily routine. Do you have your own little routine to make your days easier? Do you throw in some self-care? Maybe you take a morning walk to get the day started. You get places in 15 minutes early to settle in. You eat lunch outside or maybe an evening workout session to wind down from the day. That's great. But someone who's living in survival mode may not keep up with these rituals. Every once in a while, that's absolutely okay. However, if you're skipping out on pieces of your daily routine, arriving places late or not showing up at all most of the time, this could be a sign you're in survival mode. Number two, you're ignoring your basic needs. Survival mode makes it difficult to do anything extra that isn't absolutely necessary. Whether it's meeting your basic needs like bathing, eating, drinking enough water, or making sure you get your self-care in. Survival mode makes us anxious and irritable it uses up all of our energy to protect us from whatever danger our brain thinks is coming. Since all our energy is taken up preparing for this danger coming, nothing is left for our basic needs, which leaves us in a rut. When you're in survival mode, you may work until you're dehydrated and sick or until you realize closing time was three hours ago. Number three, you go with the flow way too much. To clarify, you're not going with the flow here. You're being taken for a ride. The first one is not survival mode. Going with the flow is when you're choosing to consciously adapt so you can process. Being taken for a ride, however, is survival mode. This is the danger response of neither fight nor flight, but to submit or freeze. It's being so overloaded that you short circuit and do nothing. So everything and everyone who isn't you makes the decisions and you just go along for the ride. While your brain is saying, well, if I don't fight back or run away, it might not hurt me. Say your bully comes up to you and demands you to give them your last cookie. If you choose freeze, you might just sit there in shock, too stunned to do or say anything. If you submit, you may just give them the cookie. So if you're choosing to freeze, not do anything, or submit, do what you're told, instead of making decisions for yourself, this might be a sign of survival mode. Number four, you get anxious with similar types of events. Have you ever been through a traumatic event? Being in a situation that reminds you of that past trauma can definitely trigger survival mode. Even if nothing is actually happening, your anxiety heightens because you're subconsciously associating the stimulus with the past traumatic event. The sound of footsteps in a hallway means nothing unless an abusive parent is coming to punish you. Where are you from? is a harmless conversation starter. Unless you grew up in a toxic environment and where you came from affected your personal safety. If this is consistent and prolonged, it's somewhat akin to PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder. And reaching out to a mental health provider is not only helpful, but highly recommended. Number five, you're exhausted, but aren't sure why. Have a long day? No. Start a new exercise course. No. Not sleeping? Nope, sleeping at night like normal. Why are you feeling exhausted then? Survival mode could be sucking up all of your energy, which keeps your body tense and anxious all the time. Your brain thinks you need to constantly deal with imminent danger. Now that you've seen what to look out for, here are some tips that apply to all the previous signs on how to handle it. Tip number one, stop and breathe. There's breathing and there's breathing. That shallow in the throat breathing isn't giving you what you need. Try the four, seven, eight technique. In through your nose while counting to four in your head, hold it for seven seconds, then smoothly exhale out your mouth for eight seconds. Repeat until you feel more settled. Now you've got good O2 saturation and a calmer heart rate. Tip number two, 
check yourself before you wreck yourself. Survival mode ensures you do the raw minimum to survive. It doesn't think of things like hydration or sleep, so you feel better tomorrow. It's all about now, now, now. If you don't take a self-check, you'll end up feeling burned out. So hold up. It doesn't take long. Just hit pause and go through a mental checklist of your basics. Like, have I eaten? When did I last have some water? What exact emotions am I feeling right now? Angry, sad? This is you taking charge of yourself and recognizing what you need so you can get things done. So grab that drink or that power nap. Tip number three, you want to move it, move it. Okay, you don't have to join Zumba or aerobics class, although you can if you want. It doesn't actually matter how big or small the movement is, just move. This helps your blood circulate and deepens your breathing. Your muscles will loosen up as a result. This released tension helps signal to your brain, no, there is no tiger about to eat me. Tip number four, ask for help when you need it. Just because you feel alone doesn't mean it's true. There is no shame in asking for outside help when you need it. Trust us, it works better than going solo, and that is why mental health providers exist. You can even ask a trusted personal friend, loved one, or mental health professional for help. You are not alone. The survival mode is only meant for short durations. We aren't meant to always have this function on. Modern comforts and lifestyle have distorted danger, making the on switch stick. No wonder we're always exhausted. We hope these ideas have helped you recognize when something needs balance and where the off switch is. So how did these signs and tips vibe with you? What kind of insight have you gained for yourself or for others? We'd love to hear from you and we're surviving with you. Give us a like if you agree and we'll catch you soon.